Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena game to video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a blue-red Lithoform engine deck, the 4-mana Mythic Rare Legendary Artifact from Zendikar Rising, which for 2-mana can tap to copy target activated or triggered ability we control and choose new targets for the copy. For 3-mana we can tap it to copy target instant or sorcery spell we control and choose new targets for the copy. And for 4-mana we can tap it to copy target permanent spell we control and the copy becomes a token. So we can't simply make a token of a permanent that's already in play, we need to copy a permanent that's still on the stack. So we need to pay the 4-mana in addition to whatever mana cost of the permanent we're trying to cast. So Lithoform Engine is a pretty slow way of generating an advantage over the course of a longer game, but if you do get to activate it a few times it can definitely pull its weight. And I think there's two approaches to building a Lithoform Engine deck. You can either ramp, so you generate a ton of mana that you can then sink into activating the Lithoform Engine, maybe copying some more expensive spells as well, or you can just keep the curve of the deck very low so you can still cast a cheap spell and activate the engine alongside it. And that's the approach we're taking here today with this blue-red deck. And one card in particular that synergizes nicely with the engine is Seven Dwarves, the 2-mana two 2-2 two -two creature from Throne of Eldrain that gets plus 1 plus 1 for each other creature named Seven Dwarves we control. And a deck can have up to 7 cards named Seven Dwarves. So we're playing the full 7 copies of Seven Dwarves. And if we have a Lithoform engine in play, we can play a Dwarves for 2 mana, and then while it's on the stack for 4 mana we can copy it with a Lithoform engine, putting 2 Dwarves in play, which will then buff each other. So the Dwarves is definitely great in multiples, that's why copying it with the engine is so nice, and being so cheap also makes it quite feasible to copy it with the engine. And then as you'll see we've got a lot of 1 and 2 mana instants and sorceries that we can also easily copy with the engine. So we can play the engine on turn 4 and then on turn 5 maybe play a 2 mana instant or sorcery that we get to copy with the engine using the 3 mana ability. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 1 mana we've got the full playset of Opt as a cheap instant to scry 1 and draw a card. We also have 2 copies of Shock to deal 2 damage to any target, and 2 copies of Spikefield Hazard, which we can also play as a tap plant, or we can use it to deal 1 damage to any target, and potentially exile that card as well. Then at 2 mana we've got 2 copies of Scorching Dragonfire, which can deal 3 damage to any creature or planeswalker, and also potentially exile it. We've got our 7 copies of the 7 Dwarves, 2 copies of Thrill of Possibility as an additional card draw engine, which can discard a card and then draw 2, and we can also use this to maybe discard an additional copy of Lithoform Engine, which is legendary, so we don't want to draw too many copies. And then copying this with the Lithoform Engine potentially draws us 4 cards, and then we also have the full playset of Thundering Rebuke, a 2-mana sorcery that deals 4 damage to a creature or planeswalker, so can maybe take out an Omnath from the opponent. That's why we're playing the full playset of Thundering Rebuke instead of the full playset of Scorching Dragonfire or maybe Fire Prophecy. Then at 3 mana we've got some adventure creatures which also synergize quite nicely with the Lithoform engine since we can first copy the adventure part of the card, in this case stomp dealing 2 damage to any target, and then later we can also copy the creature half, in this case the 4-3 Bonecrusher Giant, so the adventure creatures work quite nicely alongside the Lithoform engine. And then we also have Brazen Borrower, which for 2 mana can Petty Theft and bounce an opposing non-land permanent. And then afterwards we get the 3-1 Flyer with Flash, that can only block creatures with flying. And then last but not least we also have 4 copies of Glasspool Mimic, which can be played as a tap land or as a creature that copies a creature we control. So also very nice alongside 7 Dwarves. And then a mana base, we also have 2 copies of Temple of Epiphany, then 4 copies of the Blue Red Pathway, and then a 9 basic mountains and 7 basic islands, but of course we can't forget about the dual face cards. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, we can probably keep this. Temple needs to find an extra land. Hmm, Lithoform Engine. It's tempting, but I really need lands here. If we already had four lands, I would have kept it. Can just play a dwarf. Opponent on Sultai. And a Thirst is gonna take out my dwarf. And a Reclaim the Wastes gonna find a basic land.
All right, I'll just keep up three mana. End of turn, I might just play Brazen Borrower as a 3-1 with Flash, or I can Petty Theft and Opt. Opponent playing a Kicker deck. Skyclave Shade, sure. So 3-1 that cannot block and can potentially return from the graveyard. Another Reclaim the Wastes. I'll just flash in the Brazen Borrower here. Alright, Stomp from Bonecrusher Giants, not bad. Hit for three. And then the kicker here is three mana, so that's five total. So I'm probably okay stomping the shade now to prevent my opponent from maybe fizzling my Bonecrusher Giants if they can sacrifice the shade somehow. And then we can Petty Theft or Double Opt. Replace the Shade. And then... I guess I'm okay just bouncing it with the Brazen Borrower. Hit for three. Can probably cast at least one opt. Find another dwarf, all right. So I think what I'll do is end of turn Brazen Borrower, and then next turn I can double dwarves, essentially. I could opt to try and find an extra land, but it doesn't seem worth it. It's going to be a Chronicler to find a Kicker spell. Serpoint's got a nice synergistic Sultai Kicker deck here. Finds a Roost of Drakes, yeah that's a scary card if it can make a few tokens. Can block my Brazen Borrowers. Thundering Rebuke. Could kill the Chronicler, although I think I'm just going double Dwarves this turn. Opponent's at 8, I've got a removal spell in hand, and hopefully there's no sweeper effect incoming. It's going to be a kick truce of drakes, making a token. And 2 mana for a vine gecko. Alright, so we can just rebuke the Drake token. And rebuke the Gecko and attack with all. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, fine opening hands. Maybe a bit heavy on the tapped lands, but we can keep Mimic as a spell. Do I want the Dwarves? Don't hate it. Can play Dwarves on turn 2. Opponent with a Merfolk Wind Robber. I guess I just want to kill that with Stomp while I can, before they can sacrifice it to draw a card and fizzle my Stomp. Opponent could be playing counter spells like Lofty Denial. So just making sure that I still get access to the creature half of Bonecrusher Giant is pretty important here. And then I'll just play the Giant itself. And maybe we'll just copy the Giant if it's still alive. Heartless Act kills Giants, opponent takes two. Ooh, Lithophore Engine's a nice one. So now that I drew Engine, how does it change my play? I guess I'll start with Temple. And then Hazard. Don't really need it, although 
It would be a removal spell when I don't have any removal in hand. Just doesn't deal with the important stuff. And then this turn... Probably still okay to play the dwarves, and then we'll just copy some other stuff later. Because it is 6 mana to copy the dwarves, and I don't necessarily have 6 mana. But I can opt first. And then still play the dwarves. And then I think I'm okay with the land, since we'll have the engine as a nice mana sink if it resolves. Opponent does seem to be keeping up a Thieves Guild Enforcer here. Mm, there it is. Mills me for two, so four cards in Graveyard. And a Teferi's Tutelage, alright, so opponent's pretty serious about milling me. So maybe this is more of a mill deck than a rogue aggro deck. Well, we drew a hazard anyway, which I guess is still fine here. Can kill the Enforcer. So... Play Engine. Kill the Thief. And next turn I can maybe copy the Thrill to draw four cards. Now when it comes to facing counter spells and Lithoform Engine, it's pretty interesting. Because let's say I cast a Thrill, I need to hold priority to copy it with Engine. But then if my opponent counters my Thrill, it also counters a copy, because Thrill is no longer a legal target, and the copy essentially fizzles. So if I want to play around counter spells, I can sometimes just cast a Thrill without copying it, and if the opponent then tries to counter it, I can still copy it in response, and then the copy will resolve. So I definitely have some interesting mind games here if my opponent does keep up counter spell mana. Opponent with an Into the Story, drawing four cards, milling me for a bunch. Yeah, I think I'm still down to Thrill, discarding Dragonfire and then copy it with the engine. And then see if I can hit my land drop, otherwise I'll play the Mimic. Could still play the Mimic here. We do have a lot of ways to spend our mana next turn, and we have an engine in play too. Hit for two. And then next turn I'll maybe just cast Giant and copy it, we'll see. Depends if my opponent maybe keeps up interaction. We are down to 27 cards. Opponent plays a Blank Bloom Rogue. And keeps up three mana. So we've got some decisions here. I can attempt to stomp the rogue. I can see if it resolves. And then I can stomp again and even copy the stomp. So I'll just click resolve for now, see if they have a response. That works. And try to stomp again. And now if they try and counter, I can still copy the adventure in response. Whereas if I try and copy the first stomp and they counter it, I would no longer be able to kill the rogue. Now my original Bone Crusher does still fizzle here, because it didn't have a legal target, so we don't get access to the creature half. So my opponent still got a pretty good exchange there for their runaway together. But at least the rogue is dead. And now I can play the dwarves, try and copy it for 4 mana. But then I can cast my giants afterwards. So yeah, the engine's not at its best when facing counter spells, that's for sure. Could just play giants, see what happens. And then maybe cast the dwarves. Although... Then I can't play opt and copy it. Let's start here. And if they counter giant, I can also copy it. And then maybe I'll just opt without copying it, and then end of turn I can opt with engine. Do I want to shock? Yeah, I feel like shock's okay here. And then we'll just pass, and then maybe next turn play dwarves and copy it. They do have another Enforcer. Sure. 
Mills me for two. If they play another rogue, all right, they did. I'll probably try and kill the enforcer here. And then again, I could copy with engine, but then I risk my opponent just countering everything. So I just got a lot to shock resolve, I think. Got 18 cards left, so yeah, we don't have much time to kill our opponents. I'll hold on to the opt for now. And then I'll attack. Opponent attempts to kill giants. Takes two. Yeah, we're probably getting to the point where I simply can't play around a counter spell. Funny thing, I can also copy the giant's ability here just to deal two extra damage to my opponent. But I don't think that's gonna be enough. Maybe I can opt in response. Just to see if my opponent has another flash card here, which they seem to be holding. Just a land. Yeah, I just gotta play dwarves and copy it. And hope it doesn't get countered, because I'm kind of out of options here. Alright, that works. How many dwarves do I have left? Let's see, one, two, three... Four, five in the graveyard. Opponent bounces a copy. And I might even lose on damage here instead of getting milled out. So we're losing on two fronts. And we drew another engine. That's not gonna do it. Yeah, could have maybe been a little bit less careful to play around counter spells and just try and get more value from the engine. Although it feels like we kind of drew too many lands here in the end. Take six. Five cards left. And next turn we're also just dead to damage. Glass pool mimic. All right, let's copy the dwarf. If my opponent lets me. All right. I mean, if we drew without a turn sooner, maybe we could have gotten there. They had a runaway anyways, so if they bounced my dwarf in response to the mimic, they also would have just fizzled everything. Alright, GG's. Opponent gets a sneak peek at my entire deck list. And they've got a perfect victory here. Win with damage. And we have zero cards left in library. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Can play Temple. Facing probably the... Omnath ramp deck here. And you know what? Just curving dwarves into dwarves into glass pool mimic could be a way to pressure them. I 
Also, we will need an extra lance, otherwise I'll be forced to play Mimic tapped alongside Dwarves next turn. It's gonna be a Skewed Swarm, which I guess I'm happy to stomp. And then hopefully next turn we get to play double dwarves so we can attack for quite a bit. Another swarm. No lands. Okay. Good to know. So I guess I'm okay just double dwarves in here. And then next turn we can maybe thrill to dig for a burn spell or just bounce the swarm for a turn. Alright, regrowth is a bit unfortunate as I get to search up two lands now. Although there's still just 1-1 one, one tokens and not the actual copies. So I think I thrill discarding thrill. And a scorching dragonfire will do. And then we're definitely killing the swarm before they get a chance to play an extra land. And our opponent could play Omnath here, which can maybe gain them some life if they can follow it up with a land. But we can bounce it. And yeah. Opponent's just dead here, can bounce Omnath, attack for 12. And there we go. We beat the 4-color Omnath deck, even if they had some mana issues. Sweet. Alright, we're on the draw with a uh, fine opening hand, I guess. Can play the Mimic as a land on turn 1. Opponent with a turn 1 Archfiend's Vessel, so some sort of sacrifice deck, maybe. Dragonfire can exile the Vessel, so they can bring it back. Fireblade Charger, so maybe a Black Red Party deck, or I guess Charger still kind of fits into a Sacrifice deck as well. So I could play Dwarves, could get stolen by Claim the Firstborn, and then sacrificed by a Village Rites, uh, although it does block most of my opponent's creatures. Or I can try taking out one of their creatures here with a Shock or a Dragonfire. Dragonfire on the Scorpion also prevents the trigger from happening. So definitely have a lot of options here. I think I'll just start by playing the Dwarf. And see if my opponent uh, has a way of removing it. Alright, they don't, so I'll just take one. And a Croxa. So... What do we get rid of? I'm thinking Thrill. Stomp is not bad. Although I kinda also like the idea of Mimic copying the Dwarves while we can. Although maybe I should just play the Mimic as a land here. And then I still get to Stomp something or Dragonfire. Yeah, just play Mimic as a land and then... I'll keep up Scorching Dragonfire and Stomp here. Have to be a bit mindful of a village rights, potentially sacrificing one of the opponent's creatures. Attacks with all. So let's block probably the Scorpion. Opponent doesn't have a response. Scorpion dies and triggers. So if they have the village rights, it's somewhat likely that they would have sacrificed Scorpion before it died. 
opponent puts lures in hand. So, opponent is tapped out. Probably a good window for Stomp, so I can play Giant next turn. And then, can't really kill Charger, because the Dwarves has one damage assigned to it. But I probably don't want to face a 5-5 Demon, because next turn I could play Lurus and bring back Vessel. And then I can play Giant, keep up Shock, and hit for 2. And then we've got plenty of answers to Lurus, although they will be able to get back a Scorpion on the way out. Brings back Scorpion, and then do I shock Lurus or do I hold Dragonfire to exile it? I think I just shock Lurus now. Exiling Lurus has the advantage of a Call of the Death Dweller not getting it back, but same can be said for potentially exiling Croxa. So. Probably cast opts. I could keep opt in hand to discard to Crocs if they escape. But I also kind of need to find a bit more action besides all these removal spells. This would have been a great spot to find a Lithoform engine. So I probably just gotta pass and then let my opponent escape Croxa, use my two removal spells to deal with it. And we're gonna be pretty low on life. Uh-oh, claim the Firstborn, stealing my giant. At least he can't escape Croxa this turn. Oof, Lampad to sacrifice my giants. That's unfortunate. So I guess... Let's see, if I Dragonfire the Lampad, they can sack Giant and sack Lampad, but at least I don't have to take the 4 damage from Giant first. So I think that's the play. But now I don't really have a great answer to Croxa if that shows up. Alright, Lithoform Engine. I guess that sort of does it. And then I have to keep Mountain in hand and next turn copy the Rebuke. Although I'm gonna go very low here. And my opponent's still at 27, so they've got plenty of time to find more ways of dealing damage. And they're pretty close to just escaping Croxa twice. So that's why I wanted to hold the Scorching Dragonfire to potentially exile the Titan of Death's Hunger. I'll trade at this point. Right, Hazard's nice answer to Vessel. Oof, another Croxa. So they've got five cards in graveyards. And a call of the Death Dweller even. And that's just gonna be game over. Alright, it's too bad. The engine doesn't quite get there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. With a fine hands. Now 
No need to play the Spikefield Hazard as a land. Enforcer, we will just kill on site. If my opponent passes with two mana, I could play the dwarves. I think I just gotta keep up Dragonfire for when they flash in their Thought Thief here. And get ahead of this entire milling situation. And then now we've got double blue, can maybe flash in Brazen Borwer if needed. Opponent does nothing. Could also just stomp their face, play a giant. I mean, this probably gets countered one way or the other. Problem is, if it uh, counterspell is Lofty Denial, I can play around it by getting one more land in play. If the counterspell is Drown in the Loch, it doesn't matter. And it could just be holding removal or more flash creatures. I think I'll wait to try and play around Lofty. And then I guess we can play the Dwarves. Opponent does nothing. Sack for two. Opponent still doing nothing. Let's give him a Brazen Borrower to deal with. That one gets drowned. Mimic. Alright, so I've got a few ways I can play this. Probably want to attack first before I try to copy the dwarves, because if I play this and they kill dwarves in response, it's a disaster. Even if I miss out on one damage. But I could also just play giant and copy it. They definitely have something here that they can play. I'm not sure what it is. Or I can just wait, maybe try and use stomp first, killing one of their creatures, and then play giant and copy the giant instead of copying the dwarves. Because they could also just be patient here and be taking two from dwarves despite having an answer for it. So I think I'm just tempted to pass. And then that's perfect. We get to kill the enforcer. And then next turn play giants, maybe copy something. We're up to seven cards in Graveyard. Maybe could have played Giant Main Phase, because if they counter it, I get to mimic the Dwarves and hit for one more damage. Although I also wouldn't mind keeping up Scorching Dragonfire, in case they go end of turn Rogue into a Zareth San, which is a card they're likely holding here at this point, as they haven't done much. So I can play Giant, probably want to play Land first in case they play a Flyer into a Lofty Denial. Alright, also gets Drowned. So, do I go for Mimic copying Dwarves? Still a bit risky. I think I'll wait one more turn. Would be lovely if we can have a second creature in play when we play Mimic, so a single removal spell doesn't blow us out. Alright, I think it's time. Alright, it gets Disputed, which I can pay for. All right, get to copy the dwarves. A rankle's not bad. And 
it's gonna make me discard and sacrifice a creature and I probably want to sacrifice the Mimic instead of the Dwarves in case they bounce it. Because Mimic without the Dwarves in play is not very useful. Get rid of Shock and sacrifice the Mimic. Alright, so we're not in a great spot, but we are the ones that are attacking for two at least. Enforcer. 3-2. Can maybe try and rebuke that. And a scavenger. Alright, I guess we'll just dragon fire the enforcer and then rebuke the scavenger. And prevent getting milled for two. Oof, they have another one. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll attack into it. Because I wouldn't mind trading. Point falls to two. They would have been dead to a shock here. Putting back up to seven. Another reinforcer. That's uh, not the first one. That's the fourth one. Stomp can kill Enforcer. Could also attack, see if they block and then kill them. How likely is my opponent to block at this point? Pretty likely, I would say. Dispute we can pay for and then we can still play the giant afterwards. So yeah, my opponents, if they have Nothing left, can't really afford to attack anymore. Opponent's looking at my graveyard, so they probably have a Zareth in hand. Although if they Zareth the scavenger, they don't get to gain any life. So they're just gonna hit for five, go back up to six. And play Wind Robber. So their hope is that they can jump and then draw into some interaction. I should play the engine now in case they try and kill my giants, because then I can copy the triggered ability here. Alright, so chump, sack robber, and I think this is Zareth as her last card but they couldn't find any other instance and they die. All right, very close game here against the blue-black rogues deck. Sadly, didn't see the engine in action, but uh, yeah, I'll take it on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Lurus as companion with a pretty fine hand. We've got our lithoform engine, some cheap spells, dwarves to maybe copy. Turn one planes, so maybe an enchantment deck, never mind, make that cycling. Definitely gotta kill the fox while we can. Yeah, the cycling matchup's probably pretty rough. Since we don't close out the game particularly quickly, so Zenith Flare is gonna be the main concern. We can definitely deal with the early creatures, so that's not a problem. So play Dwarves, next turn we can play Temple, maybe Rebuke something. And then get our engine in play. To be able to beat a Cycling deck we probably need a couple counter spells for Zenith Flare or a way to exile their graveyard. Put on Cycles a bunch. Don't need more lands. So we don't have the fastest start here. Think I want to keep opt to play turn 5 maybe, to copy with engine. And this is one of the downsides of Rebuke being a sorcery, not being able to kill the stinger before it does a bunch of damage. Suppose I could opt to try and find a shock here, although we only have one shock left in the deck so it's pretty unlikely. 
Yeah, I guess I gotta take a turn off dealing with the stinger. Don't think I can afford to uh, take a bunch of damage from it. And then I can keep a Brazen Borrower to bounce their next creature. Hit for two. Another stinger. And a flourishing fox. Which of these is the biggest problem? I mean, I can bounce stinger, they can just replay it right away. But at least the fox doesn't grow if they plan to cycle in response, but they would probably just replay stinger. Fox can definitely be the bigger problem if I don't find removal right away. So... Wait until end of turn, and then probably bounce Stinger for now. And we'll see what they do. Let's it happen. So I won't necessarily be able to attack into the Fox unless I can copy the Dwarves. Which I could do now. Do I want to opt first is a question. If I find a burn spell, it would probably be a cleaner solution here. Another mimic. Problem is, even with the 4-4 dwarf, the fox is probably going to outgrow it. So I'd rather just find an actual removal spell. Find land. So if I play engine this turn, next turn I'll have... Six mana, which is not enough to copy a Mimic. So it could go Mimic plus Borrower. Yeah, I guess we'll just Mimic now then. And hit for three. When it puts lures in hands and plays rescuer. All right, so they don't have a ton of cycling cards left, but of course they can start playing stuff out of the graveyard, which is a problem. Yeah, I guess we'll play it. And then I get to attack. Opponent can maybe cycle, make a chum blocking one one token. And then I have to decide here if I want to play Engine or if I want to flash in Brazen Borrower. My opponent is at 9. They probably have a Zenith Flare in hand to gain a bunch of life back. So the game doesn't necessarily end within the next turn or two. So I think I still prefer playing the Brazen Borrower for now. So Lurus can get back a Stinger or Fox. And I really need to find an answer for Lurus before uh, it gets too much stuff back. On the bright side it does make Zenith Flare a bit weaker. Alright, Brazen Borward to draw. So can I afford to attack with my Dwarves on the ground is a question. I think so. Maybe leave one back on defense so Lurus can poke me for free. And then I'll keep the Brazen Borrower to respond accordingly. If they grow the fox twice, I'll bounce it. Opponent takes seven. That's surprising. So they just put themselves dead to a shock here. Oh, 
We'll hang on to Brazen Borrow for now. So, they have a bunch of cycling cars in the graveyard. So they currently can Zenith Flare. So they could have a go for blood to maybe kill my Brazen Borber. Now that option is gone. I can Borber the Lurus to prevent them gaining three and then they're just dead to the Brazen Borber. And our opponent explodes. I feel bad for Lithoform Engine since we didn't get to copy anything, but I guess it worked out in the end. So yeah, conclusion, Lithoform Engine. I liked the idea in theory. Had a few moments of Lithoform Engine seeming reasonable, but at the end of the day it's still a 4 mana card that doesn't have an immediate impact when you play it. And uh, even if you do get to untap with it, you probably need to activate it a few times before it's really worth the card. So don't recommend spending your wild cards building around Lithoform Engine, but at least you get to see the animation for the first time. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.